Hello, bug dads and bug moms and bug parents of all types. Welcome back to my channel and welcome to today's video, which is a continuation of last week's video. My name is Nancy. I'm an entomologist, which means that I study bugs and I live in Ecuador where I'm normally doing tourism focused on insects and ecology and conservation, but as it is quarantine, there is none of that. So here I am talking to you about bugs on the YouTubes. Hello. I am currently in the middle of a painting project, so I'm actually really glad that last week's video had to be separated into two parts because right now filming in my office is a little bit of a conundrum as my tripod is literally balanced on three paint cans right now. So in today's video, which is a continuation of last week's video, we are going to be talking about five really, five really good bug dads. We are going to be focusing on some examples of male exclusive care where the dad is doing all the work, poor dad, and some examples of when the dad is helping and has different roles than the mom or the female does. Here is a quick recap from last week's video so that way you can get caught up and if you want to get caught all the way up because you're so curious and you didn't watch last week's video it is up there and you can click on it in the little card that should be right here. Exclusive male parental care in arthropods is extremely rare. We only see it in about 13 taxa and out of 1 million plus insects alone to only see parental care show up in about 13 small taxa is really indicative of how seldomly and how kind of rare this evolutionary process is, which is why it's probably so obscure and why we don't know much about the mechanisms to make it happen. Before we get into Katie Diz, let's start off with a, another dad joke from Derek. What do they call inchworms in Canada? 2.54 centimeter worms. Although interestingly enough, because I live in Ecuador and speak Spanish, inchworms in Spanish are called the medidores, which literally means the measurers. So I find it really funny that including across these two different languages, they basically still have the same name which is pretty interesting. So that was a dad joke and a fun fact all at once. You're welcome. <laughs> Katie dids. The males in this case don't necessarily take care of the eggs in the traditional sense where he would like sit with them or whatever, but he does give them a head start. The males will produce a spermatophore. This is a sperm packet that not only has sperm, like the name suggests, but also has fats and proteins and other nutrients that the female needs to produce big eggs to give her offspring the best chance at life because they have been well fed. And smaller sperm packets, or they can make fewer and bigger sperm packets. Some of these bigger sperm packets can weigh up to 40% of the male's body weight, which is absolutely crazy and he will pass that entire giant present wrapped up in this white froth stuff and put it into the female's abdomen. This, this, this channel's not for kids. I'm just gonna leave that here. <laughs> Puts that into the female, and while the sperm is being absorbed and goes into the spermatheca, the female will reach around and eat the sperm packet that is coming out of her abdomen. With her sufficiently distracted, the male then leaves. If the sperm packet is too small, she might not accept it or just absorb the sperm packet and his sperm instead of using it to fertilize her eggs. But that 40% of the male's body weight sperm packet is a care package designed to help her produce well outfitted eggs. So even though neither parent hangs around with the eggs afterwards. They are well nutritioned and the babies inside are well fed. So when they leave, they have plenty of energy and are of a big size to be able to compete with other Katydids that are around and other species that are looking for the same resources. 
Okay, number two, and time for another dad joke. Yeah. Un Fernandez Indefenso says, Sorry for the bad joke. Oh, don't be sorry. We are here for the bad joke. It's a picture of a mantis on screen. Okay, son, I'd say not to lose your head for a woman, but... Also, in the reference section below, you'll find a link to an article that my friend Joe wrote. Actually, most mantises do not eat the male. They only eat the male in about 20% of the cases, and when the females are particularly protein-starved. However, the joke is still funny, so we're going to let it go. But if you're interested in reading more about that, it is in the reference section below. Okay, we are now going to talk about the giant water bug, a very descriptive name. I know, someone looked at it and was like, well, it's, it's a bug, and it's giant, and it lives in the water. Brilliant. And its other common name is the toe biter, because they have these little raptorial forelegs and can grab you, which almost never happens, and then they have a pretty painful bite. I don't recommend picking them up. They are intense animals. They can eat turtles. They can eat fish, okay? Like, their venom hurts big things, don't pick them up. I, I very rarely tell people not to mess with insects, and this is one of the insects that I recommend that you don't mess with. Anyway, regardless of their maybe scary demeanor and their ferocious attitude, they actually are great fathers, adorable. So there are two different genera that we are gonna be talking about today. Why is genera the plural and not genuses? I understand that it's Latin, but I don't Care. Anyway, genera. Genera. <laughs> Dude, we're going to be talking about two different genera today, and they have both very extreme forms of parental care, but they do it differently. The first genus that we're going to be talking about is the genus Lethoceris, and the females will lay their eggs on top of some vegetation that's so just sitting on the top of the water, and the males will hang out underneath the water surface on a stick or something but hang out nearby. The males will act aggressively to anything that dares poke the eggs or get near them or disturb them. And the male also has a special role against ants. If ants are coming in and trying to eat the eggs, the male will deploy a chemical defense specifically against the ants to protect the eggs, which is a really interesting example of parental care and one that hasn't been shown in other systems. We're gonna talk about two other genuses and lump them together. The genuses are Abadeus and Bellostoma. These two genuses, the females will actually cement the eggs on the back of the males. The males cannot fly, they are encumbered, it's harder for them to walk because they are walking around with a giant pile of eggs on their back. The males are responsible for taking care of the eggs and the fact that not only do they make sure that predators don't eat them, but because they're on the male's back, the male has to make sure he neither drowns the eggs nor lets the eggs dry out. And so the male does a lot of work at making sure that the eggs are properly cared for and don't get too wet and don't get too dry. Because these males are limited in real estate, literally their back, and they are risking their lives to take care of the eggs because again, they're literally cemented to their back, these males do not tolerate eggs that they did not father. What's really interesting in this example of males that are taking care of the offspring is that the roles between the males and the females almost kind of reverse, whereas the females would be very choosy about a male, usually the males then become very choosy of the females. So it's really interesting because when we start seeing paternal care instead of maternal care, we start seeing the roles, like the evolutionary roles and the evolutionary selec selections flip with that role reversal. This next example was actually brought to my attention by a fellow Twitter user, Matt Casson, and he also provided all of the amazing photos and video footage you see, so if you're interested in donating photos or videos to video series like this one, feel free to contact me either by DM or by email me, emailing me. This millipede is in the family Anthronathidae, and its scientific name is Brachycybe leconoti. What's really interesting about this is that the females will lay the eggs, but then the males will like pick them up and have them in their little legs and groom and take care of those eggs. 
What they're doing when they're brushing those eggs off is making sure that microbes and other diseases and like fungus and all that stuff aren't getting into and attacking those eggs. And so the male will carry them around and also brush them off until they hatch. Once the eggs hatch, they're kind of just on their own, but that initial step of just taking care of the eggs and giving the eggs the best chance that they could get is shows what a great arthropod dad these millipedes are. So before we get into our next arthropod of highlight, we need another dad joke. And this one came from Daniel via Instagram because I put this prompt on my Instagram story. He wrote me, what is the coolest part of an insect? The bee's knees. <laughs> All right, this fourth example actually isn't a bug. It's not even an insect. It is an arthropod in the order Opilionis. It is an arachnid. These are your daddy long legs, and boy, do they look weird in the tropics. Like normally, you would expect them to look like this, but in the tropics, they look like this. So this is actually daddy long legs, just like welcome to Ecuador. Interestingly, there has been parental care that has arisen in the harvestmen or the daddy long legs in four different families are one of the groups of arthropods that I found that has some of the most parental male exclusive hair. The other one would be like the true bugs, the hemipteran. We covered the water bugs already, but there's also some stink bugs and some assassin bugs and some leaf-footed bugs. But I don't want to go through all of them. I wanted to like show the diversity of the bug dad. So we picked from a variety of different places. Anyway, harvestmen, daddy long legs, parental care. This example is really interesting because normally males fight for females. This is why you see birds dance and lizards like have at it. They are trying to show the female like, hey, I'm the biggest and the best. Please choose me and not Bob over there. Kay thinks bye. Whereas in turn, because these males provide parental care and stand guard over the eggs, the females actually fight for them. This is demonstrated in Amphiaries leucophius. These males will actually accept more than one female's egg clutch at a time because the more egg clutches he has, the better he is at being a dad. He will accept clutches at different developmental times. So you can have eggs that are just about to hatch and you could have eggs that were laid 10 seconds ago, but he will guard all of them because him showing that he can guard all of these different females eggs shows other females who might want to mate with him like oh look at look at all of these that i've been taking care of um i'm clearly the best dad here out of everyone so you want to mate with me because look at how well i can take care of all of these different eggs and so it's a very strong considered what we consider honest signal about his fitness if he's strong enough to be able to defend all of those eggs from various predators. Finally, for another silly dad joke related to science, we have the bug zoo woo. It's like, why was Pavlov's hair so soft? Because he conditioned it. <laughs> Moving on, we are going to move on to our final example. This is another insect, but it's a wasp. And it's really interesting that we would see parental care in a wasp because of their sex determination. Females lay eggs that are fertilized to make more females and females will lay eggs that are unfertilized to make males. Usually, especially in the solitary wasp, males are fed less because they just like couldn't get a good caterpillar or something like that. They're like, oh, we'll just like lay a, a, a male egg down there. And he's like, I'll figure it out. And all he has to do is mate. That's all he has to do. He has to survive long enough to mate and that's it. Many wasps in this genus of Tripoxylon have some sort of parental care, but I will be focusing on Tripoxylon monteverdii, which I'm not sure if I pronounced that correctly, but I said it with confidence, so that's all that really matters. Anyway, we're gonna talk about why these males are good bug dads. So we see males show up over and over again in Hymenoptera, these bees, ants, and wasps with basically kind of being, I would say, inferior and not a lot of energy put into them. They're basically just necessary to fertilize females so that way you can get genetic diversity in your next generation. The fact that we have 
male parental care in the, some of these wasps is actually really interesting. The males and the females have very different roles. I thought that was particularly interesting, especially how the roles are divided. The females of these tripoxylon wasps, they will be responsible for nest construction, whereas the males are left to guard the nest. Females will bring back bits of mud to build the nest and also bring the provision and do the hunting to fill the nest up so that way when she lays an egg, her little wasp larvae have something to eat when they hatch and grow up. As the female is bringing back things to construct the nest with, the male is inside the nest and he is smoothing out the walls and, and assisting with the construction. Him being inside and assisting with that construction is seen only in these T. monteverdei wasps and not in others of the same genus that also exhibit parental care. Finally, I think it's really interesting that the male is the one that guards the nests because because he has no chemical defenses, he doesn't have a stinger. Male wasps, bees, and ants cannot sting because the stinger is made of the ovipositor, which is the female-derived organ, and that organ is used to lay eggs. It has only been highly modified in bees, wasps, and ants to deliver a painful sting. Because this is a female-only organ, obviously the males don't have it. So I find it really interesting that the males are responsible for guarding the nest and like sticking their little heads out and biting whatever comes by when the females are much more equipped theoretically to sting any invaders or attack any invaders. It's just the male that's like left his own defenses basically hanging out and guarding the nest. After the nest is finished being constructed, again, the male like smooths down the inside of that wet mud, which is just his job to do and also the guarding for the most part is just his job to do. When the female comes back and the nest is completely constructed and she brought spiders to fill the nest up with, she will then turn in backwards and walk into the nest and lay an egg. The male will then help gently pull her out by her antenna and he will mate with her again to ensure that the next nest that they build together and that he guards will be his sperm. This example I think is really interesting because there are other insects that do divide up the labor a little bit. For example, dung beetles, the males are the ones that fight over the dung and push the dung into a big pile or into a big ball. But after that, they just kind of leave which is the most normal, which is kind of what I was talking about with the katydids too. The katydids, you know, leave this big sperm packet and then like, ciao, bye. But I think it's really interesting that not only do you have this division of labor among the sexes, but then the male also hangs around and specifically guards the nest, despite the fact that, I don't know, again, I think it's weird that you have the one defending the nest that doesn't have the chemicals to do it very well. Apparently he's very good at taking out like ants and other things that might just walk up to the entrance, but things like parasitoid wasps that could pierce the outside of the mud tubes. For example, he isn't very good at guarding against. He tries his best. He tries his best. Okay, bugs, let me know which was your favorite of these examples. And of course, if you have examples, because like I was mentioning, there are 13 complete taxa that have this male exclusive care or male parental care. So if you have some that are really interesting to you and you're sad that I did not cover them, feel free to leave them in the thought box. I might do another video about this in the future. If you like this video, please like it. If you like videos like this, hit subscribe so you can see more of them. I will see you bugs all next week and hopefully my office will be painted by then and if it is not, then you will be getting a video that I recorded sometime in the past as well. All right bugs, see you next week. And of course, here is a video brought to you from this same playlist and down here is a video recommended to you by the almighty YouTube algorithm. Bye.